Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Friday, November 8, 2013. We begin with news from the world of medicine. Researchers from Texas A&M have been testing an already existing drug for some potentially amazing new purposes. Particularly, the drug called Meclizine, which is an over-the-counter antihistamine also used to treat nausea and motion sickness. The researchers identified it during a drug screening experiment used to identify compounds that inhibit cellular respiration. This may seem counterintuitive, but too many diseases and conditions can be made worse if the mitochondria of damaged cells are too active. So compounds that allow cells to figuratively tap the brakes are being heavily investigated. Another thing that makes meclizine so promising is that it's fairly well tolerated by the body which is why it's available over the counter. Further investigation showed that the drug does not directly affect mitochondria, which are the sites of cellular respiration in animals, but instead indirectly affects respiration. All of this allowed them to identify a metabolic pathway outside the mitochondria, but still related to respiration, that the drug was targeting. Interestingly, the reduced respiration seemed to come from interfering with a pathway used to create more cellular membrane. After such encouraging results in certain disease models, the researchers hoped this drug and derivatives could help treat a wide variety of conditions, specifically targeting respiration in cancer cells or even other infectious organisms. Other work already showed it could prevent damage by slowing respiration in models of stroke and heart attack. Since this drug is already widely used, it may accelerate the development of its other potential functions, or at least that's the hope. Our final story comes from the world of biotechnology, and it's also super meta. Normally we talk about breakthroughs in biofuel research, like a more efficient way of producing it or a new source of biomass to use. But this week we have a development in how bioresearch itself is conducted. That's because a team headed by Pacific Northwest National Laboratory has found a way to analyze the effectiveness of multiple enzymes simultaneously. Before we go into more detail, we should probably establish some background information. A lot of biofuel research relates to enzymes, either from nature or man-made, and in this case, from a particularly popular fungus used in this field. The fungus has a vast arsenal of enzymes it uses to break down large polymers, including cellulose and other complex sugars found in waste plant matter. In order to get the most bang for their buck, scientists wanted to isolate the right combination of enzymes to use for various kinds of biomass processing. So they could either test a big batch of enzymes to see the overall effect, which doesn't really help you narrow down the options or they could do an experiment for each individual enzyme, seeing how it reacts to various chemical conditions, which takes a really long time. These researchers were able to develop a system that results in the best of both worlds. A combination of enzymes can be tested, but the effectiveness of each individual enzyme can also be tracked simultaneously. It works by attaching chemical probes to each type of enzyme in the experiment, which allows researchers to monitor their activity using mass spectroscopy and other methods. With this technique, experiments that took months could potentially be accomplished in just a few days, allowing scientists to find the perfect cocktail of enzymes that will result in cheap and effective biofuel production. Well, hope you liked this episode. Like our final story, what kind of meta-research would you like to see done? Let us know your thoughts on that and all the stories in the comments.